Hi, and welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math, where today my lesson is on using properties to solve equations. Our objectives today are that you will solve linear equations using the properties of equality for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Then you will be able to justify each step using these properties of equality. Here's what I'd like you to think about while we're going through the lesson today. How do you justify your process for solving an equation? So key vocabulary that I'll be using so that we can review and make sure you understand the language I'm using. First vocabulary word is equation, a statement that two expressions are equal. So stating that this is equal to that. A linear equation and one variable is really just that. It means that you have an equation, so there's an equal sign, and there is only one variable. It can be any of the 26 letters of the alphabet. I know typically we see an X, but there are other variables that we see in math, but you can't have more than one. So for example, you can't have an X and a Y. You can only have an X. You cannot solve one equation if it has multiple variables. The reason it says that a cannot equal zero is because any value times zero is zero. So if a were zero, it would eliminate the x term. A solution is a value that makes an equation true. So we solve an equation to discover the solution, what the variable is equal to. Inverse operations are two operations that undo each other. Addition and subtraction undo each other and then multiplication and division undo each other. Equivalent equations are equations that have the same solutions. And as you go through the process of solving equations, you end up with equivalent equations. So first we're gonna review what the addition property of equality is. It states that adding the same number to each side of an equation produces an equivalent equation. Here's an example. I have the equation x subtract 3 equals 4. To solve this equation, I need to isolate x. I need to get x all by itself. So I have to undo this subtract 3. To undo that, I want to add 3 to each side. Using the addition property of equality, what I do to one side of the equation, I must also do to the other side. Here, I've added three to both sides to create a zero pair. Negative three and three are zero. So when I add the left side of the equation, I have x. And when I add the right side of the equation, four plus three is seven. This x equals seven is my solution. Seven is the value for x in this specific equation. And the equation x equals seven is an equivalent equation to the original equation. Now let's talk about the subtraction property of equality. It states that subtracting the same number from each side of an equation produces an equivalent equation. So here I have the equation x plus 6 is equal to 11. Once again, I want to isolate x. I want to know what x is equal to. So the inverse of add 6 is to subtract 6. Using the subtraction property of equality, I know that if I subtract six from the left side, I must also subtract six from the right side of the equation. So we're gonna subtract six from each side. This creates my zero pair. So the left side is equivalent to x. The right side, 11 minus six is five. So my equivalent equation, x equals five, is also my solution, x is five. Now let's show you how to justify using the addition of property of equality. So we're going to solve the equation, we're going to provide a justification, and we're going to check our solution. So typically when you get to algebra one, it's not just solve the equation. So first I need to identify the variable, what is happening to it. We're subtracting four. The inverse of subtract four is to add four to both sides. My justification is the addition property of equality. Simplify each side. We get x is equal to negative two. Negative six plus four is negative two. Now I've justified, I've solved 
I've justified, and I need to check my solution. So to check my solution, I'm going to replace x in the original equation with negative 2. So now we have negative 2 subtract 4 is equal to negative 6. I'm going to add the opposite. Negative 2 add negative 4 is negative 6, and it checks. Now let's justify using the subtraction property of equality. So we're going to solve, justify, and check. So now the variable's on the right side. That variable expression is on the right side of the equal sign, and that's okay. I still want to identify what is happening to the variable. It's being added by 1.9. The inverse of add 1.9 is to subtract 1.9. So subtraction property of equality is the justification of this step. So now we simplify 0 0.7 subtract 1.9 is negative 1.2. And because this is a zero pair, all I have is y. And again, this is an equivalent equation to the original. Let's check. We're going to replace y with negative 1.2. So 0 0.7 needs to equal negative 1.2 plus 1.9. And if we do negative 1.2 plus 1.9, we get 0 0.7, and it checks. Okay, your turn. I would like you to solve, justify, and check your solution. Pause, come back when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So first I end identify that m, my variable, is being added by 5. The inverse of add 5 is to subtract 5. When I subtract 5, my justification is to the subtraction property of equality. Here's my zero pair, leaving me m, and negative 9 and negative 5 are negative 14. I'm going to check my solution, replacing m with negative 14, and negative 14 and 5 are indeed negative 9, and it checks. Try another one. Go ahead and solve, justify, and check. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So identify that x is being subtracted by 2 thirds. The inverse would be to add 2 thirds to both sides using the addition property of equality. x equals negative 2 thirds. Negative 4 thirds plus 2 thirds is negative 2 thirds. Let's check, replacing x with negative 2 thirds. Negative 2 thirds, add the opposite, so negative two-thirds and negative two-thirds is indeed negative four-thirds, and it checks. Two more properties. The multiplication property of equality states that multiplying the same number to each side of an equation produces an equivalent equation. My example is x divided by 3 equals 4. The fraction bar is also a division symbol. The inverse of dividing by 3 is to multiply both sides by 3. Using the multiplication property of equality, I know that what I multiply one side of the equation by, I must also multiply the other side. So the left and right side of the equation must be multiplied by the same value. By doing this, I know that this is a reciprocal. x divided by 3 is equivalent to 1 third times x. 3 and 1 third are reciprocals and when multiplied equal 1. 1x one or x, remember that 1 is invisible. 4 times 3 is 12. If we check it, 12 divided by 3 is 4. Now let's use the division property of equality to solve an equation. Dividing the same number from each side of an equation produces an equivalent equation. So if I have the equation 2x is equal to 8, this is 2 times x. The inverse of multiplying by 2 is to divide by 2. Using the division property of equality, I divide both sides by 2, giving me x is equal to 4. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Your turn. I would like you to solve, justify, and check. Pause, come back when you're done. Welcome back. So I identify that my variable m is being divided by negative 5. 
the inverse of dividing by negative 5 is to multiply by negative 5. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 5 using the multiplication property of equality. I now simplify this expression and I get m. Negative 4 times negative 5 is 20. Now let's check. I'm going to replace m from the original equation with 20. 20 divided by negative 5 is negative 4 and it checks. One more. Go ahead and solve, justify, and check. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So in this equation, we have a coefficient of pi. Pi is a symbol that represents a number. Pi is an irrational number that does not terminate. So to write it in here as a new number would be 3.14 or something similar to that, and that is rounded, that is not exact. So sometimes in math, science, we use symbols to hold the place of a number. So if I want to solve for x, it's being multiplied by pi. The inverse of multiply by pi would be to divide both sides of this equation by pi using the division property of equality. Pi divided by pi is 1. Pi divided by pi is 1, resulting an equation or solution of x equals 8. We'll check our solution. We'll replace the x with 8, and we have pi times 8, which is commutative property, 8 pi equals 8 pi. So it checks. And there you have it. That's how you use the properties to solve and justify your equations. I hope you enjoyed this lesson today, and I hope you will come back soon to the magic of math and subscribe and register for new videos that I post. I hope you have a great day.